Guys, we're going to go ahead and get started. All right, guys, so we're going to be on page 42 in our Wisdom Wants book. We're going to talk about lesson nine today, Rumble Scripts. So have any of you guys ever been on the road and you're riding in the car? And when the car kind of get off the lane a little bit, the car really starts to vibrate and like make like a noise, okay? So that's what rumble strips are. And what they're for is if somebody's like kind of falling asleep when they're driving, it's kind of a warning to kind of get that person back on the road to help keep them safe. So I'm going to talk about spiritual rumble strips today. Warnings that God gives us to try to steer us back on the right path. And it's very wise to listen to his voice. And when you think about rumble strips, when you're driving on the road, not every road has rumble strips. Um, so that's kind of a lesson for us where God's warnings are there if we choose to listen. And we might hear the warnings, but if we kind of get further from God, we might hear less of his warnings. Less and less, the further away we get, the closer we get, the more and more warnings we'll hear from him. So it's very important that we stay close to him. So we can hear his warnings. And the lessons, the Wisdom Walks principle says, pay attention to God's warnings. And it says by Frank Howard Clark, the quote, a man's conscience, like a warning line on the highway, tells him what he shouldn't do, but it does not keep him from doing it. Frank Howard Clark. So following that quote, God will warn us, but we still have free will to go whatever path we choose to go to. But when we listen to Christ, he always leads us down the right path. And I want to give you guys a wrestling example at the start here. We're going to work on push-outs. So I'm going to let you guys go like one at a time in the center. And when you guys are getting kind of towards the end, all, all the guys that are like not in at the time and the coaches start yelling at the guys to kind of encourage them, to warn them that they're off to the side. And if you step out at all, if you step out, then you lose and you're on the mat. And if you stay in and keep your body in bounds, then you're the winner. We're kind of go to the ending to, to get a winner. But it has to be wrestling action out of bounds. You can't just push the guy. You gotta be working for underhooks, working for takedowns. This is gonna be freestyle pushouts. All right, but just like those rumble strips on the road where God tries to keep us in, keep us in the right lane, going down the right path, I want us to try to stay inside the inbounds of the mat to not go into the rumble strips on the outside. All right, so who, what two wanna go first? We'll help Any you. two. Yep, thanks coach. One. Two. All right, let's see it. Okay. Rip. I'm sorry. So you good? Get on, one on the green, one on the red. I'm on the Coach will get you guys next in line. He'll get you guys ready. Go ahead, shake hands and go. Brace your next. Once you push out, you're out. If you win, you're staying in. Let's go. Okay. Start wrestling. You got to get them all the way out of bounds. All the way out the big circle. I might just have you do. Like sumo, push. Come on, yeah, go. Yeah, sumo, man. Come on. I might have to do the little circle. Yeah, do little circle. Let's do little circle. Yeah. We'll do a big one for this one, but you're good. Here, just reset. Yeah, reset. Reset, let's just reset do the and go a little circle. Oh, okay. Yeah. And. Stay in bounds, stay in bounds, stay in bounds. They get close. Talk Help to them out. Holler at them, man. Help them, guys. Encourage them. Circle Matthew. Oh, all right. Blue guy Bryce, wins. Go. Next guy. Are we going to make a little circle? Get ready. Get set. Quick. Get set. Make quick. Little circle. Oh. Hey, if you want to stay on the red. Little Let's circle. Stay on red. Little, circle. Go. Go. Little circle. Go. Little circle. circle. Out. Circle. Good. Gray, stay on red. Next guy, green. Listen, no, for, listen to the coach's voice. He'll tell you who's next. Go. Slap and go. I think it's both feet. Out. You're already out. Gray stays in on red. I think it's both It's both feet, right? No, just one foot. Just out of bounds. Oh. Yeah. Out of gen. Oh, you got socks on. Good luck. Go. Oh, cheese wheezy. Oh. oh I gotta wrestle. It. Wrestle through it. If you get a takedown, we're just gonna like Bryce. reset. Come on, Bryce. Go, Ryder. Oh. Uh, then you're next. Run through. Run it. Run it. Run out. Oh. Oh, I don't know. What do y'all think, good. Coach? What do y'all think? Bryce. 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 Jump in there. All right, then if you lose. Let's go, Ryder. Let's go. So, how's it not Zach? Let's go. Because Zach's already gone against you a bunch already. Yeah, we're just choosing random. Cheer him on, guys. Help him out. Make it close. You got to come up to your feet, Ryder. Not going to do the ground exactly. You got to come up. Oh. Yeah, you're out. Good. Ryder got it good. He lifted him up enough. All right, next. Well, if I stay on my feet, I'm just on slide. Yeah, Well, you got to have your shoes on, man. Save the best to last. All right, this is the last one. 
No, no. Alright, let's go. Come on, go. Right to it. It's later. I would say Rocky. Yeah, Ron already stepped that anyway. Alright, Zach and then Trey. Can't do anything. Oh, no. He said he couldn't see you. I feel like you know this. Go. Wow, that was too easy. Later. Alright, Zach wins it. Why you let him win? All right, guys, back into our wisdom walks book. Perfect. All right, we are going to be, I'm going to kind of read through the pages for us, and I'm going to give you guys a lot of scriptures tonight to kind of teach us some things. So page 42, and this is a story the author gives. So it says on page 42 in Wisdom Walks, when I'm driving on the main roads and highways, I periodically, so from time to time, experience that horrendously obnoxious, that annoying rattling vibration when I approach a toll booth or go outside the lines and hit those rumble strips. Everybody say rumble strips. Rumble, rumble strips. strips. Depending on your car, you can experience a loud warning and tremendous tremors all the way through your steering wheel. So a lot of vibration, a lot of warning. Some even have reflectors to add a visual warning. When I hit those rumble strips, they definitely get my attention. I often wonder if I'm going to blow a tire. The most common reasons that drivers hit the rumble strips are fatigue or sleepiness, carelessness, inattentiveness, and distraction. By the way, did you know that studies compare driving while fatigued or tired with driving under the influence of alcohol? So if someone drives tired, it's just as dangerous as if they're driving like on alcohol. And same thing if a person's texting too. It's all dangerous and you see the same maneuvers. They're kind of weaving in and off the road, not staying in their lane. Um, the same holds true for the use of cell phones that we can now use to call, text, and surf the web. While these rumble strips may seem incredibly annoying at the time, their warnings prevent accidents and save thousands of lives each year. I can't count the number of times these rumble strips have rattled my car and jolted me awake to avoid an accident. Safety experts have installed rumble strips on our roads for a good reason. Driving can be a blast, but it can be also dangerous. Hmm, that sounds like a lot like life, doesn't it? That's why we need to pay attention to God's warnings, to God's warnings. All right, this is Acts 27, 9 through 20 in the paraphrase version. Paul warned them, our voyage or our trip will be disastrous and bring great loss to ship and cargo and to our own lives. But the centurion, instead of listening to Paul, followed the advice, advice of the pilot and of the owner of the ship, and the majority decided to sail on. When a gentle south wind began to blow, they thought they had obtained what they wanted. Before very long, a wind of hurricane force swept down from the island. The ship was caught by the storm and driven along. We took such a violent battering that the next day, they began to throw the cargo overboard, then the ship's tackle. Finally, we gave up all hope of being saved. So Acts 27, 9 through 20, paraphrase. So this story gives a clear picture about what can happen when we ignore warnings. Paul, God's messenger and a prisoner, wanted the crew not to sail. It was storm season, but the leaders were impatient. So they took a vote and decided to ignore the warning and go along with the majority. Everybody say, don't ignore God's warnings. Don't ignore God's warnings. Their immediate conditions improved, so they were emboldened. So they were bold about it. They thought they were doing the right thing. They kind of got prideful. They were emboldened and convinced that they chose the right path. But then disaster struck, a hurricane hit, and after a long fight, the storm drove them along, and they completely lost control. The boat and crew took a tremendous beating and eventually suffered great loss as they threw their precious cargo, so everything they had on board, overboard. God uses warnings to wake us up, keep us on track, and prevent disaster. So things got so bad for the crew that they gave up all hope of being saved from that storm. That sounds a lot like life, doesn't it? We're given warnings, but we ignore them, get beat up, and give up hope. What if we instead listen to those little nudges in our conscience? God works through warnings, too. So like our conscience, just think of it like this. Mm -hmm. You guys ever heard someone say the angel and the devil on your shoulder? Yeah. So every day, every decision we make, that's also the spirit and the flesh. So that, that idea of God's trying to lead us one way and the devil's trying to lead us another way. 
So there's an angel on one shoulder and a devil on the other. And Jesus is saying, always listen to me. Always go the right path. Listen to my voice. So wake us up is what God's warnings do. So they wake us up. Sometimes our defenses are down and we don't realize the decisions we're making could lead to a big mistake. They seem innocent, even harmless at the time, maybe. Other times we're blinded by emotions or think we're strong enough to handle the situation. God's warnings also keep us on track. The narrow road always leads to light. And God has an amazing adventure planned for us. Choosing detours that lead to destruction create delays and rob us of the relationship with Christ that he desires. And God's warnings also prevent a disaster for us and others around us. Our sins always affect us more than just us. So our, our choices we make affect everybody around us, not just us. Somebody else gets hurt in the process. The military calls this collateral damage. Our actions always have far-reaching consequences. God speaks to us in many ways through our consciences. Remember, that's the angel and the devil on your shoulder. Other people, the Holy Spirit, and the Word of God. So God speaks to us through a lot of things. Our ability to hear him, discern his voice, and then obey his di direction affects every aspect of our lives. When I pay attention to God's warnings, I usually know the right thing to do. Then it's just a matter of doing it. But when I ignore his promptings or his warnings, the answers he gives when I pray, or the advice of a close friend, it usually doesn't work out too well. Then I look back and think, why didn't I pay attention to all those signs or all those rumble strips? I could have avoided so much hardship. What rumble strips are you driving over in your life right now? Make no mistake, God is trying to get your attention. So I'll go through live it, the maximize it, and the scriptures for you. So live it. Take a good look at the decisions you are making, the situations you put yourself in. Have you felt the jolt of rumble strip warnings? If so, in what specific areas? Um, there's one scripture that I felt led to show you guys for this question. We can look in page 198 together in our Bible here. Page 198. And it's James 1, 19 through 20. And this is a principle that I think is very important um, for really anybody of every age. Because um, God always calls us to, to follow this. And it's a very important principle I want you guys to get. James 1, 19 and 20. Page 198 in the Wrestler Bible. James 1, 19 and 20. It says, listening and doing above it. Page 198. Everybody got it? All right. It says... Understand this is the first part. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen. So God calls us to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. So, you know, if we're like in a, in a situation where maybe the person is getting frustrated, maybe we can try to figure out how to handle it, doing the right things. Be quick to listen to what the person's saying. A lot of times we're quick to say everything that we think. We don't really take time to listen to the other person. Quick to listen, slow to speak. Not quick to interrupt, quick to cause a fight, quick to stir things up, but slow to speak and slow to get angry. So really, you know, being calm, taking a deep breath, trying to be patient in that situation, not getting overzealous or over frustrated, trying to fight. And it says human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. So those are things that God calls us to. And I think in whatever situation we're in, when there are the warnings for us, if we follow that scripture, that'll help us out in a lot of things in life. It can avoid a lot of pain. And like I said, are you thinking before you speak? Are you thinking about the consequences of your actions? So as you guys grow in wisdom, and th this is helping even you younger guys, because a lot of younger, pe younger kids, they don't really think about their choices before they make them. And your brain isn't really developed to your 25, but that's a, another thing. I'm not going to go on a tangent. But as you get older, you start to think about your decisions before you make them. And if you can start doing that now as a younger person, you're going to get so far ahead in life. And it's going to save you a lot of pain by thinking about what can happen if you do this, if you make this decision now, instead of just making the decision and seeing what happens. It says, why do you think God might be trying to get your attention? And I'll put... I put here to keep you from a dangerous situation, to keep you from getting in trouble. Maybe there's a friend in school that 
wants to invite you over to his house, but you hear him talking about smoking marijuana or drinking alcohol, and you kind of hear them talking about that. Or maybe they have a vape. You heard him say something about having a vape in their backpack. You're like, hey man, come on over to my house. And they want you to come hang out with them, but they want you to come vape with them. And God will be giving you a warning to not go with that friend, to choose a different friend, to not make that decision, um, to keep you from getting in trouble. You know, getting in trouble in school, getting in trouble at home, you know, grounded, you know, losing your PS4 or whatever you guys have, you know. Um, Xbox is better, by the way, but that's another thing. Can I have one thing here, real yeah, quick? Go ahead, go. Go. Do you guys remember the very first lesson that we talked about? Yeah. Xbox. What was, Xbox. What was it called? Do you guys remember? Anyone remember? Xbox. Very first one. Real quick. Don't worry about the Xbox, guys. We'll talk about that later. No. Say it again. Smart talk. Walk with the wise. Walk with the wise. Walk with the wise, yeah. Right? Walk with the wise. Smart talk. Right? Smart wise friends can be rumble strips, too. They can help us out. But unwise friends, right, those ones that are causing problems, aren't going to be there to give you a rumble strip. They're going to be the ones that push you over the line. Right? So be smart with that. We talked about God in, God out. It's also garbage in, garbage out. Right? Same thing. If you start hearing stuff from your friend, you're going to take that garbage in pretty soon. What are you going to have? Garbage out. Awesome. Thank you for that, Coach. All right. And it says here also to keep your heart and mind close to him. So God gives us warnings to keep our heart and mind close to him. And the further our heart gets away, the more dangerous it will be for the person. I'll go over that in a second. To maximize it. Talk with a trusted mentor about the rumble strip warnings God has revealed to you. Ask if they see any other areas of concern that they should address, that you should address. Um, why do you think God might be nudging you in these areas for your protection and benefit? Make a list together with, with your parents. What changes could you make in your life this week to keep your tires on the road and not bumping into those rumble strips? Um, let's look at Proverbs 29.1, and uh, I'll, this one's in my book here, so this is page 601, so just listen to this one right here. All right, we're still doing good here. All right, page 601, Proverbs 29.1 says this, one who becomes stiff-necked after many reprimands will be broken suddenly and without a remedy. So basically what this is saying is when a person becomes prideful, like stiff neck, they think that they're better. They think that they know the right way. They don't, they don't take any direction from anybody. Their teachers are leading them down the right path. They're not trusting that wise guidance. They're not trusting the wise voices of their parents, their coaches, their teachers, that type of person. And it says after many reprimands, after many corrections, like they're running and they're going down the wrong path, they're hitting rumble strips. And you got the teachers, the coaches, the parents, they're going rumble strip, rumble strip, rumble strip, warning, warning, warning. It's like yellow light, yellow light, yellow light. Eventually it becomes a red light. Um, they'll be broken suddenly and without a remedy. So there won't be a, a fix to the problem because they've gone so far off the path. All right. Um, Luke 16, 19 through 20, 19 through 31, page 67. So let's go there in our wrestler Bible. So page 67 in the wrestler Bible. You got to think about it this way too, guys. You get multiple warnings from your teacher, then you get a referral. Referral gets you ISS. Too many ISSs could get you suspended or expelled or kicked out of school. Yep. You got to think about it that way. Somebody in my class got homeschooled. Yeah, that's yep. another thing. You can get homebound. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, so Luke 16, 19 through 31 on page 67. This is a parable of the rich man and Lazarus. So this is 19, Jesus talking. So Jesus said, there's a certain rich man who was splendidly clothed in purple and fine linen and who lived each day in luxury. So purple means royalty in the Bible. So basically he's like a king. At his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus who was covered with sores. As Lazarus lay there longing for scraps from the rich man's table, the dogs would come and lick his open sores. Finally, the poor man died and was carried by the angels to sit, sit beside Abraham at the heavenly banquet. The rich man also died and was buried, and he went to the place of the dead, so he went to hell. There in torment he saw Abraham in the far distance with Lazarus at his side. The rich man shouted, Father Abraham, have some pity. Send Lazarus over here to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. I am in anguish in these flames, so he's in such pain. 
But Abraham said to him, Son, remember that during your lifetime you had everything you wanted, and Lazarus had nothing. So now he is here being comforted, and you are in anguish. And besides, there is a great chasm separating us. No one can cross over to you from here, and no one can cross over to us from there. Then the rich man said, Please, Father Abraham, at least send him to my father's home. For I have five brothers and want him to warn them so they don't end up in this place of torment. But Abraham said, Moses and the prophets have warned them. Your brothers can read what they wrote. The rich man replied, No, Father Abraham, but if someone is sent to them from the dead, then they will repent of their sins and turn to God. But Abraham said, If they won't listen to Moses and the prophets, they won't be persuaded even if someone rises from the dead. So Jesus is saying, even if someone rises from the dead, and that's Jesus, Jesus is the one that rose from the dead, their, their heart is so far from God that they wouldn't follow his warnings. Um, let's look at Acts 2, 36 to 41, page 99 in the Wrestler Bible. All right, Acts 2, page 99 in the Wrestler Bible. Acts 2, 36 to 41, and then 20 and 23. We'll get 20 and 23 in a second. So Acts 2, 36 to 41, page 99. It's the bottom right of the page. So let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, to be both Lord and Messiah. Peter's words pierced their hearts, and they said to him and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, each of you must repent. That means change your mind about sin. Ask God to change your mind. The things you're doing that are wrong, ask God to change your mind, to change your heart on those things. Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you, to your children, and to those far away, all who have been called by the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging all his listeners. So he's warning them, save yourselves from this crooked generation. Those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all. So let's go to Acts 20, 23 now, page um, 117. All right, page 117, Acts 20, 23. Page 117, and it says, Except that the Holy Spirit tells me in city after city that jail and suffering lie ahead, but my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned to me by the Lord Jesus, the work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. Um, so basically, just from that verse, I just want you guys to see that the Holy Spirit was warning and talking to Paul as he goes to preach to people. Um, let me show you a couple more scriptures. Galatians 5, page 161 in the Wrestler Bible. Page 161 in the Wrestler Bible. Galatians 5, we'll do 19 through 25. Page 161. This one's very important because I'm going to go over with you guys things that are sins and things that are honoring to God. It says in verse 19, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, that's your flesh. Remember, you got the spirit and the flesh, the angel and the devil, the, the conscience. The results are very clear. Sexual immorality, so that's any type of sexual sin outside of marriage between one man and one woman. Impurity, depends on what the person's looking at. Impurity. Lustful pleasures, so again, that's lust, looking at a person, having those desires. Idolatry, so that's making any other god besides Jesus, worshiping something as an idol. The only true god is Jesus. So idolatry, um, sorcery, any type of witchcraft, there's no such thing as good magic. Black magic and white magic is all, witchcraft is all evil. So sorcery or witchcraft, hostility, like starting fights, quarreling, starting fights, jealousy, being jealous of other people, outbursts of anger. There is a righteous anger, but like, like we talked about in James 1, there is also an unrighteous anger. 
selfish ambition, so trying to get things in a selfish way, dissension, division, um, envy, drunkenness, so getting drunk with alcohol, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. So a person that lives in these sins will not go to heaven. But the Holy Spirit, this is what God calls us to do, though. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit, these kind of actions in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. So when you do those things, the fruit of the Spirit, in verses 22 and 23, you can't sin when you're doing those. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another to be jealous of one another. All right. Um, yeah, I'm going to show you guys a couple more because I just want to end it here. But Hebrews 3, this is very important. I want to make sure you guys hear this part. Hebrews 3, 12 through 15 page 189 Hebrews 3 12 to 15 page 189 everybody say there's a lot of voices that try to speak to me everybody says there's a lot of voices voices okay so there's a lot of voices that try to speak into your life the devil has a lot of voices for you to try to listen to but the Holy Spirit is the only voice that will lead you down the right path and this is what the Holy Spirit is saying to us in verses 12 through 15 in Hebrews 3 on page 189. It says, Be careful then, dear brothers and sisters. Make sure that your own hearts are not evil and unbelieving, turning you away from the living God. You must warn each other every day while it is still today, so that none of you will be deceived by sin and hardened against God. For if we are faithful to the end, trusting God just as firmly as when we first believed, we will share in all that belongs to Christ. So we'll be going to heaven with him. Remember, and we'll experience heaven on earth too. Remember what it says. Today, when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts as Israel did when they rebelled. So we see that in that Hebrews 3, 13. Every time a person sins, their heart gets harder and they get further from God. Think about this. You guys ever told a lie before? You can be honest, right? Told a lie before. You tell one lie, is it a little bit easier to tell the next one or maybe a little bit harder? Easy. It might get a little bit easier, right? Yeah. What if someone keeps telling lies? Yeah. Will they even know the truth from a lie anymore? No. They won't even know the difference, right? So every time you sin, your heart gets harder toward God. That means it's less likely to listen to his voice, less likely to repent. So that's why it's very important that our heart stays close to God, and we're repenting of our sin, asking God, change my mind on this sin. God, I think it's okay to do this. Your word says I shouldn't do it. Help me to love you and not love that. And when we stay close to God, our heart will stay soft. The softer your heart is, the more you'll be able to hear his voice. But the harder your heart is, you'll hear the devil's voice. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I might give you guys some more on a Thursday just as quick reminders because there's a lot of good stuff here. But I'll pray for us, and then we'll be back here on Thursday. Father, examine my heart and my actions. Show me every part of my life. Expose everything. It means bring everything to the light. Reveal to me the nudges in my conscience that I've ignored. Help me to hear your voice, to feel the rattle from the rumble strips, and to make the changes necessary to stay on the road. Give me the focus and strength I need to follow your direction for my life, not my own. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And the last thing I'll leave you guys with is, Jesus is the good shepherd, and Jesus said, my sheep, my believers, my Christians, they know my voice, and they follow me. Um, and I got a cool video I might show you guys on Thursday if you want about a shepherd leading his sheep, and it's really cool. The sheep only listen to the voice of the shepherd. And Jesus calls us to only listen to his voice. All right, we'll see you guys Thursday.